So hi from Oridev from the Night Hacking interviews and now we have a new guest, Mark Smalley. Hi Mark and please introduce yourself and, and what are you doing? Yeah, well great to be here. It's my first um, first contribution to the uh, to the community here. Somebody oh recommended really? it. One of the, one of the uh, speakers at previous uh, at one of the previous uh -huh. conferences, Alan Kelly, who's pretty well known in the agile community. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, "Give it a go." And really, since the start, since the initial contact with the organisers here, it's been a great um, sort of great vibe to the place. And mm -hmm. I, so I was interested when I actually got to the conference whether the experience would be the same as the image that they'd projected okay, yeah. during the, the preparations. And it is. It's cool, it is. cool okay. place. Yeah, really cool place. Yeah, I'm um I'm a self employed IT management consultant and trainer. So I try okay. to help IT managers organize IT better. My interests are non technical. That's good. We can need that. Organize yeah. better IT. <laughs> well yeah. Well so, you know somebody has to organize it. Even if teams self-organize it themselves, work mm -hmm. has to be organized. Right. And I think one of the uh, one of the challenges in uh, in our world is organizing work, particularly getting work through the value stream quicker. So mm -hmm. work flows from from left to right, to you know, from right. from the business to development, testing, integration, into production, where the value actually gets gets realized. Right. Right. Only when the users use the systems, you get value out of it. So the quicker you get it into into production, into use, Absolutely. The, the more the value, um, value realization. Um, I, I've, got a, I've got a strange job title. Mm -hmm. I call myself the IT paradigmologist. Okay, I, I won't repeat that. Yeah, no, okay. the, the IT <laughs> How do you get that? Well, just, just, just think about the word paradigmologist. Uh -huh. S the study of paradigms. So I study right. IT paradigms. I okay. uh, you could say a paradigm, something that's come up fairly recently, last five years, um, certainly serious interest in the DevOps movement, yeah. where development and operations collaborate more closely together. Right. I'd say DevOps is a great paradigm, mm -hmm. a different way of approaching IT. And I, I, you could say it's a sort of a trend watcher thing, right. I'm observing how things are, are, are moving, shifting in the industry. Um, so the, uh, the, that's the the IT paradigmologist, mm -hmm. and please pay attention to the the IT paradigmologist. If you right. find another IT paradigmologist <laughs> with this um, all this fake news around at the moment, uh, right, and just tell them yeah, to copyright. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. So I'm I'm the IT paradigmologist. I'm also strongly affiliated with a not-for-profit knowledge sharing membership organisation based in the Netherlands, uh, okay. called called the ASL BSL Foundation. Mm -hmm where we've collected best practices around application management, which is really everything that happens to applications after the initial build. Okay. So after, after the initial version of the application mm -hmm. has been built, it's in production, all of the support, maintenance, renewal right. of the applications, right. which takes up the majority of the budget, because typically there'll be about 20% spent on the mm -hmm. initial development and 80% on everything after that. That's application management. Right. That's a discipline that is on the supply side of IT, providing mm -hmm. IT services mm -hmm. to the users, to the business. But the other, in the other area of interest we have at the foundation, we call business information management, which is the stuff on the other side of the fence the things that business people have to do mm -hmm. in order to interact effectively with IT and, and make the right investments, right. delegate that stuff to those difficult IT people right. who are notoriously awkward to deal with. And when the IT pe people have done their stuff, ensure that the users actually use the systems well and get value out of them, hopefully the value that they'd intended in the first place with their right with their investment. So the, these two these two bodies of knowledge that we have, ASL and BSL they're called, uh, is my role as the foundation's ambassador mm -hmm. to build bridges with other communities uh, within the IT world right. to see how we can um, sort of Im Im improve the way we work. Yeah, that's um, that's in a, in, in a nutshell. And I, I enjoy writing, enjoy speaking, mm -hmm. uh, enjoy helping people um, try to visualize where are we at the moment mm -hmm. and where would we like to be 
Uh, so that's uh, made made me made, yeah, made me a very happy person. Yeah, yeah. That's, that sounds very great, and especially that you try to. Uh, it sounds like you connect a lot, connecting the dots, connecting different silos, different people, um, with mythologies and and paradigms to well make it better, make better outcomes, better results for for the companies or for anybody. Yeah. To yeah. Well, it's 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 funny you mention that. Um, I was talking recently to uh, to somebody at the uh, you might have heard of DASA, the De DevOps and Agile Skills mm -hmm. Association. Mm -hmm. uh, they're one one of the bodies who are um, contributing to this uh, this area. And the, the um, lady behind it, Deborah Burton, she asked me, "What what do I do?" Mm -hmm. Really, I. I write and I speak and I connect. Mm -hmm. I think that they're, they're the they're the three that things. Sums it up. So, yeah, so it's certainly the great enjoyment when you can c connect people right. together and uh, absolutely, absolutely. And I think also the the sharing knowledge part, right? At least this is what I also saw uh, for myself. So I I try to educate um, and and share knowledge um, a lot, even workshops or blogs and everything. And I think you also improve yourself, like your own knowledge a lot right by, by by sharing knowledge and by trying to to helping others right because when it, then it's it's kind of like uh, you're a teacher up to some uh, degree right and you learn you learn the most when you teach stuff i totally agree yeah <laughs> i fully agree on the i've had, i've recently put this on the opening slide to my presentation mm -hmm. so they're up on the background when i'm waiting right. to uh, to speak um, I have to think about things in depth before I can talk about them with uncertainty. Is that th thing that the more you learn about stuff, mm -hmm. the more you realize that you don't know anything at yes. all? Yes. So I say, so if, if you catch me talking about something with apparent certainty, I probably don't know what I'm talking <laughs> then about. Then be careful. <laughs> 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 That's good. Yeah, no, you do. You, le you learn the most if you, uh, if, if you have to teach people. Mm -hmm. It's you know, great, great fun. Always learning. Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally, uh, totally agree. Um, okay, so since uh, for you it's the first time here at Oridef, yep. um, so it is uh, for me actually. Um, so what's your... Um, Experience so far. What's um, well, what image do you, do you have now from from the conference? Yeah, well, it, it's it's. Uh, I'm talking to um, by coincidence. By coincidence, um, on the s at the speakers dinner um, on the evening before the conference, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we were seat seated at the um, seated at the tables. And there was just one seat left, and somebody came along and said, uh, "Could I sit here?" Yeah, well, yeah, you're most welcome. Turned out to be Ben Ward, who's the who's the host mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. conference. And we we got we got on very well, I hit hit it mm -hmm. off very well. And um, I found a soulmate in the, in mm -hmm. him. We share lots of common interests, and he talked about the conference, which he's experienced now, I think, for the third time. He says it's a bit. It's, it's more like a festival than a conference. Uh, okay. It's got that kind of vibe to it. You know, people just hanging out and. Uh, no, it's great. Good. Certainly an excellent, uh, excellent feeling to the place. Very technical. Mm -hmm. For me, most I think most of the talks, probably eighty percent, are mm -hmm. very much focused on technology. So I feel I feel in a minority, mm -hmm. which I'm perfectly happy with. Focusing more organisational stuff. Thinking, I did a talk yesterday about DevOps mm -hmm. that I m mentioned previously. I call the I call the talk "Kill DevOps," <laughs> which sort of gives it a catchy, catchy, sure. t catchy title, which might get you thinking that it's uh, that I'm against DevOps, but the opposite is the case. It's just the uh, I draw a parallel with parallel with Zen Buddhism. Mm -hmm. uh, the if you imagine the monk the young monk on his road to awakening and enlightenment trying right, to right. trying to find find buddha and on his road he suddenly has a, has some insights and he thinks i found buddha i know what buddha is but the zen master who knows much more hits him over the over the head with a yeah. with a cane stick um a bamboo stick he says no if you see buddha on the road kill him because you'll never find Buddha. 
it's, you, it's just an illusion. Mm -hmm. You have to keep searching and searching okay. and searching. And I draw the parallel with DevOps, which is very much an emergent mm -hmm. movement. Mm -hmm. There is no authoritative source a book that says this is DevOps. This is DevOps. This is we, right. we have d we the right. two of us. We, have we, we, have we own DevOps. We have defined it. So it's very much, um, very much a movement which is uh, which is emergent, emergent and explorative. And so more I say, I, so I say to strive for. Yeah, that's right. So I say, if you find if you find kill if if you find DevOps <laughs> on the road, kill it. Keep learning and experimenting, because you'll it's contraproductive productive to think to, to pin it down just won't work so that's that's a talk I did yesterday and the talk I'm doing in an hour's time is um, is on the the often troubled relationship between business people and IT people mm -hmm. it's always been difficult to get yes. uh, business people and IT people to um, to communicate effectively right. they, they live it's like, it's like uh, a minute, men are from Mars and women yes. are from Venus. Yes, like I absolutely different, agree. Different perspectives, and I, there's one of the areas I like to explore, and with the audience, uh, the participants this morning, uh, d discover what constitutes effective behaviour. Mm -hmm. So, if you're business and I'm IT, mm -hmm. uh, wh what kind of behaviour would you like to see from me, from IT, to right. make our collaboration more effective? But the other way around, as an IT person. For me, it really helped me if you could be uh, not only articulate and clear about your needs, but gives, give me the background, give me the strategy, the business strategy that you're working with, so, so I understand what you want to achieve right. with your investment. Not only what you want, you know, you yeah. give me the specifications right. of the requirements, right. but what you want to achieve with it, that'll help me Absolutely. understand. Absolutely. So identifying productive, effective behavior that's uh, that's one of the topics. But then thinking about behavior, what actually influences behavior? Mm -hmm. If you want to influence my behavior, how can you do that? Right. You can you can use carrots and sticks. Give me more money and try and pr pressure right. me to behave differently. But my true behavior is driven by emotions and beliefs and values, which are much more deep rooted. Yeah, and understanding each other. Yeah, it's certainly mutual understanding, but you know how how on earth do you influence my values? Well, right. first you've got to understand them first. That, that, that's, a that's that's one of Stephen Covey's things. First, seek to understand, yes, yeah. and then, then to, to be, be understood. understood. So right. it's the other other way around. Absolutely. So I'm going to do a, a cup cup. It's only forty minutes. But I mm -hmm. often do it in a, in a longer setting. Um, explore emotions. Emotions at an IT conference. Explore emotions and values with the participants. Right. Just to get people a little bit more aware of the the power of emotions and values in influencing people's behavior. Absolutely, and I think this is um, a totally underrated topic, especially in IT, like uh, communication at first, and then well, emotions, empathy, and all these things, because that does matter and it is important in our daily work, right? And and people like like you say um, on every conference or every IT technical conference are mostly just interested in, in the hard stuff and the hard uh, tech things, right? But it's also the soft skills that matter a lot. Right? Yeah, and not only that ab about the results that you'll achieve with it. What do you? Absolutely. I, I recently I stole this blatantly from somebody else. I forget who. I should I should credit him for that. Uh, when I open the talk, I say, I, I think there are two critical questions that you should be asking yourself and possibly asking speakers as well when you, when you hear their, listen to their talk. The first question is, really? Be, mm -hmm. be somewhat skeptical, be mm -hmm. critical. You know, what, you know, what evidence do you have to back this up? Is, right. it a, is it a plausible argument? So that's the first question, really? And the second one is, so what? <laughs> yeah, understand mm -hmm. what you say. Right. But who no. is going to benefit no, from this? Can I get anything yeah. out of it? My customer, my manager. Right. So, the really, two powerful questions. Really, Absolutely. and so what? Absolutely. I think they're great. Um, they're great questions to ask, and and the certainly the so what thing. If I I I have the I have the pleasure of attending lots of conferences in different communities. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and if I reflect on the past year, eighteen months the hot topics that most communities seem to be concerned with, I'd say 
speed, not necessarily in this sequence, but speed, mm -hmm. keeping up with the speed of the change in the business mm -hmm. environment within IT, so delivering stuff quicker. Um, identifying and articulating the value, the business value from IT investments. There's a lot of interest in that at the moment, and I think the third one, and that's my Achilles heel because I'm not good on security, protecting information, mm -hmm. valuable information from external and mm -hmm. internal mm -hmm. uh, abuse or misuse. Or speed value and information security, I'd say. That, but certainly that, that value topic uh, really interests me, how you, can, how you can translate our wonderful activities mm -hmm. in IT into language that business executives understand. Right. Benefits, costs and risks, not mentioning anything about IT. Exactly. And More sales, fewer costly business disruptions, uh, happier customers. Those are the kind of, that, that's MBA speak. Right, right. And I, and I fully agree, and I fully agree that we tech people often fail to translate these, wh what we're doing into exactly these words and these languages. Yeah, meaningful, meaningful stuff. That's, okay. um, that, yeah, that's, that's what. It's, it was, but to, to just touching on what, what is meaningful, mm -hmm. going sl slightly off on a tangent, but it, it reminds me of um, how I'm going to end my talk on behavior and values and stuff like that. Um, there's a guy called Daniel Pink who's written, mm -hmm. a, written a book called Drive in which he emphasizes the value of autonomy, mastery and purpose mm -hmm. in um, increasing personal satisfaction, motivation, right. and effectiveness at work. And the p purpose that thing I think is really significant. You might have heard the story about the, the man who comes across three stone cutters chipping away at stone and mm. he asks them uh, one by one, what do you do? What are you doing? And the first one says, I'm, uh, I'm earning a living. It's clearly a job, right. just a way of earning money. The second one says, and this ties in with the mastery bit of, um, of Dan Pink's stuff, um, I'm becoming the best stone cutter in Sweden. And the final one pauses for a minute, gazes off into the distance and says, I'm building a cathedral. So there's really a connection with the mm -hmm. with the purpose. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's, he's truly got a, a vocation. Right. You know, the first guy's just earning money, he's got a job, the other one's right. w working on his profession. Uh, but the, the last one, he, he's working on a vocation. And the better you can connect your, your personal values with the values of the organization that you're working mm -hmm. for, what are they trying to achieve? Are they in the, in the, uh, in the arms industry or are they uh, curing cancer? Right. You know, it depends on your personal values, of course. Absolutely. But the more alignment you get, a guy called uh, Mark Kawasaki uh, in the US who, who did a great talk a while ago. And I, I thought he had a killer quote in the middle of his talk because he, he also talked about uh, the, the aligning your values, your personal values with work values. He, he says, there's value beyond business value. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really, uh, it was really strong, uh, yes. strong quote. Yeah. Yeah, I think we could uh, could leave that for an ending quote. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> yep, good, good for me. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, do you have any last things to to share with uh, with the live audience? Maybe with the audience who who do not attend the the Oridev conference. Come here next time. It's great fun. Absolutely, I can totally second that. So thanks a lot for the interview, and thanks everybody for watching. Yeah, pleasure. Bye, Bye now. <laughs>